Big city communities would evolve as artificial islands, floating structures, undersea observatories, and more. These large marine structures are designed to explore the relatively untapped riches of the oceans and provide improved mariculture, fresh water production, energy and mining. This could offset land-based shortages. They could also provide almost unlimited riches in pharmaceuticals, chemicals, fertilizers, minerals, oil and natural gas. Ocean cities would be resistant to earthquakes and greatly relieve land-based population pressures. The population would vary from several hundred to many thousand. Underwater oceanic viewing and research facilities provide expansive panoramic observations of the undersea world in its natural habitat without disturbing the ocean environment. Unsinkable floating sea domes would attract those who prefer unique offshore or island living. In the event of inclement weather, they could easily be towed ashore, mounted, and anchored to elevated support structures. Mariculture and sea farming systems are used to cultivate and rice fish and other forms of marine life to help meet nutritional needs. These marine enclosures are designed as non-contaminating integral parts of the ocean environment. A true world's fair of the future would emphasize the contributions made by all nations toward advancing humanity. Although this fair would provide entertainment, its main function is the deeper understanding of the world we live in and the people who inhabit it. The architectural structures themselves would be jewels of future possibilities, with a wide variety of exhibition buildings. Many of the displays will depict not what the future will be, but what it can be if we use science and technology with human and environmental concerns. It could be a vivid future showcase of the human potential. Videos three-dimensional displays and full-size diagrams will depict the fabulous advantages for all nations when working together to preserve the greatest gift we have, the resources and beauty of our planet. In a final analysis, we are one people and share one planet. Jack Fresco is the one who set up such a project. He is now 94 years old and worked all his life to the intelligent organizing of human species. Since 30 years ago, he presented solutions that barely today are put into practice, such as magnev terrain, self-erecting buildings, self-sustaining houses, plus many other inventions that have not been put into practice because of the monetary system. Actually, the Venus project, it's not his idea, he just put things in order, into a smart and progressive way. My guest is an extraordinary Miamian, Dr. Jacques Fresco. Uh, I could go through all the things that Dr. Fresco has done. He's a social engineer, industrial engineer, designer, inventor, uh, consultant, was a consultant for Rotocraft Helicopter, director of Scientific Research Laboratories Los Angeles, designed and copyrighted various items, ranging from drafting instruments to X-ray units, uh, has had works published in the Architectural Record, Popular Mechanics, Saturday Review, uh, and has been a technical and psychological consultant and a motion picture industry member of the Air Force Design Development Unit at Wright Field. Uh, developed the electrostatic anti-icing systems, uh, designed prefabricated aluminum houses. Where, what is the saying your driver's license? <laughs> what is the occupation? Industrial designer. Jack, you uh, social engineer. Does it bug you that uh, people, when they talk about Jack Fresco in Miami, say that he's someone who's too far ahead of his time? His thinking is 
We're not ready for advanced kind of thinking. No, um, that type. There's a bunch. I, I imagine every creative person in every field encounters that sort of problem. No, it doesn't. I can't afford it. There's too many things that are important. What do you think of when you contemplate the future? For Jacques Fresco, this is what it looks like. A future where technology is harnessed for all and money has no relevance. So you think you know what the future will look like? Few people do, but once that Florida man, a very brilliant man, does because he's designing it. A place where there will be no food shortages, no fear of hurricanes, and no war. It's called the Venus Project. Extraordinary 93 year old thinker who has created a strategy to build a new unified symbiotic world in harmony with nature. This project intends to achieve nothing less than the unification of the human race. It includes the design of new cities, the abolition of money, a new paradigm for living. It is called the Venus Project. He has been labeled as a genius, a prophet, a visionary, and sometimes as an eccentric and dismissed as an utopian dreamer. But in the end, no matter what they say, he's Jack Fresco, the creator and the mind behind the Venus Project, a monumental work of several fields of knowledge that unify the concept of a new future for the human civilization. Fresco's entire life is perhaps the definition of a second chance, a new opportunity for social progress in harmony with our planet and technology. 1916, Jacques Fresco has been called many things. Designer, architect, inventor, author, and futurist. His sensibilities stem from a first-hand experience of the Great Depression. A detailed understanding of the effects of a scarcity-based economy and the conflicts it produces. Primarily self-taught, Jacques advocates for a society that pursues science and technology as a means of continually educating itself believing that such a society neither wants nor needs to be controlled. Proclaimed a visionary, Jacques offers bold and complete reformation of the world's social constructs to promise a brighter tomorrow, if we can unite as humans in its pursuit today. Jacques Fresco, Fresco represents not only the sincerest belief of artists and designers to effect positive change in a society, but a pure conviction, if not responsibility, to absolve failing systems. In a 1974 interview with Larry King, Jacques Fresco can best be quoted with the following. There are no Negro problems or Polish problems or Jewish problems or Greek problems or women's problems. There are only human problems. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Jacques Fresco. When the chief says something, it's so. If the king says something, it's so. If a politician says something, it's so. Right now, they're concerned with foreclosures on banks. They're concerned with giving the banks money, and the banks didn't use that money for the purpose intended. So they have words like fraud. You can't do anything that way. You have to take in a whole picture and ask, what is it that you want? What kind of world do you want? So. I have drawings of different cities. Those cities have an end goal, they're not just cities. The goal of those cities is to make things relevant to people that they respond to. There's no other way. Now people that live in the city have many different reactions to the city. It's my home, my grandfather was born there, my favorite city, and they really don't understand what a city is, what it serves. Now, they use words like shelter. Home is a shelter. But when you wear a diving suit and you go underwater, that's a closed environment, shelter for underwater living. If a man goes out into space, he brings with him the air in a suit. And in that suit, he has all type of equipment he may need on that mission. If you give him a book, a novel to take out into space, it's dead weight, doesn't serve anything. If you give him an emergency book of what to do when oxygen stops or something goes wrong, 
That's something. But a book about how Seminole Indians treat fish would have no use in space. Our society is loaded with how Seminole Indians treat fish. There's lots of superfluous information, superfluous to the needs of people. Must everything be scientific? If it is not, it's less valid. Is there a place for non-scientific? By non-scientific, do you mean speculative notions? Or well, scientific is, I don't know, let's try to find out. Does it mean you'll find out? Not necessarily. You'll find out if you have the appropriate needs. Jack continues to invent every day, to invent, to write, to work. He has, he has a zest for life that, that keeps him going and keeps him working. And he's interested in things. He's interesting, interested in what happens out there and how, how this will play out and how it'll turn out, while very much wanting to introduce this direction to the world. So that's his prime focus. And he does that in every way he can by actually showing. It's not enough to just tell what the future will be like, but to, to show what people are missing. He keeps coming up with new ideas, new inventions, new designs, improves what he has, represents them better, makes more models, makes more videos. He's relentless at trying to get these ideas out. I think he fears where society is now. It's not acceptable to him. But instead of just complaining, he wants to propose an alternative. When people say, are you trying to build a perfect society? I have no notions of a perfect society. I don't know what that means. I know we can do much better than what we've got. I'm no utopian. I'm not a, a humanist who would like to see everybody living in warmth and harmony. I know that if we don't live that way, we'll kill each other and destroy the earth. 